Coax cables, or coaxial cable being the full name, refers to the inner and outer cores of the cable sharing the same geometric axis, hence the term coaxial, co being together and axial referring to the axis. They deliver a high frequency signal over potentially long distances and are used for many things. In this case, it's used to send a signal and image to the TV from this game console I'm attempting to fix. By the way, if you want to see me attempt to fix this console, you'll find the video on my channel and link below. I've now fixed a Game Boy, Wii consoles and an old 70s handheld game, so if you like that kind of stuff, then I'd appreciate if you check it out and consider subscribing. There are different kind of connectors that go on the end of a coaxial cable. I'm not going to go through them all, but here you can see a TV aerial connector, one of the most common connectors seen on the end of a coaxial cable. And here you see an RCA connector. RCA stands for Radio Corporation of America, and this connector is typically used to transmit an image from video game consoles or camcorders. So a coax cable is made up of a wire core, which is surrounded by an insulator, usually plastic like in this case, then there's a braided wire shield, and finally the plastic cable jacket. Let's go into more detail on each of these, starting with the inner core. The inner core is usually made of copper or copper clad steel. Now copper is the better conductor, but is more expensive, and unless you're passing power down the cable to power something, then copper clad steel is usually all that's needed. In this case, for this aerial cable for the game console that just travels a short distance and transmits a signal, copper clad steel is fine. The signal is sent along this central cable as an alternating current, and if a normal exposed wire was used, with none of the surrounding stuff, this would be the equivalent to an antenna that emits a radio frequency. But in this case, that would be bad. We don't want the signal to escape into the atmosphere because that means the signal's power is lost and we get a weak signal on the other end. We want the signal to travel intact along the full length of the cable. Now that's where the outer mesh comes in. The mesh also receives a current. And whenever there's two wires like this together receiving current, the core and the mesh in this case, there are electrical and magnetic fields generated. So what this setup does is it carries the signal through the cable as an electromagnetic wave that exists between the inner and outer conductor and doesn't extend beyond the perimeter of the coax cable. This means the signal doesn't escape, meaning we receive a strong signal at the other end. Now losses in signal can still occur due to, for example, the resistance of the conductors. Even really good conductors like copper have resistance. Losses would also occur if the conductors varied in their distance apart. If these two conductors, the outer mesh and the inner core wire, varied in their distance apart, it would create a partial signal reflection in the cable which would be bad for signal transmission. So the dimensions need to be tightly controlled, and that's where the dielectric insulator comes in. Dielectric means a substance that is a poor conductor of electricity but is also efficient at supporting electrostatic fields. So you remember that the signal is carried as an electromagnetic wave down the cable, so it's important that the insulating material between the core and the outer mesh doesn't impede or interrupt the electrostatic field that stores that energy. This dielectric insulator is usually made out of a plastic material, and it not only insulates the central wire from the braided shield on the outside, which prevents the two signals from coming into contact with one another and cancelling each other out, but it makes sure they remain a consistent distance from one another to reduce signal reflection as differences in the distance between the two conductors could be bad for the signal. Now let's talk a bit more about these inner and outer conductors. So this braided external layer is sometimes called a shield. That's because it also helps protect the signal from electromagnetic interference. So because of its role to help prevent signal loss, this helps to reduce electromagnetic interference from external sources. Sometimes you might also find a foil shield inside the cable like this one. Now this is not always the case, many cables don't use a foil shield. And in some cases a metallized plastic is used instead of aluminium foil which is more resistant to damage due to cable movement. And this foil shield is there to protect from radio frequency interference. Now we'll take a closer look at the core. The core can be a solid wire made like this or made from a collection of thin wires like this. Some of the differences between the two being that the solid wire is more resistant to corrosion. So take a look at this coax cable in this Pong console that I'm currently repairing. 
I've removed this part because it has this green type of corrosion both in the braided jacket and in the central core wire. So I've removed it in the hope that it will improve the signal. Solid core cables also have less attenuation or signal loss, making them good for longer runs. But they are also less flexible and more prone to breaking if moved and flexed a lot when compared to their stranded counterparts. Now the stranded type is more resistant to breaking. They are more flexible, which is great if the cable needs to be flexed or moved frequently. But having those multiple strands means they are more prone to attenuation or signal loss. So now let's talk about impedance. Every cable will have an impedance rating, usually 50 ohms, or like this one, 75 ohms. Impedance includes both resistance and reactance. Every material has a certain amount of resistance to it, apart from perhaps superconductors. If a material is a good conductor, it will have lower resistance. So silver, for example, has very low resistance. On the other hand, a material and insulator like glass, that would have high resistance. And resistance can be simply defined as the opposition to current flow in an electrical circuit. The higher the resistance, the more opposition to the flow of the current. So impedance is not only made up of resistance, but also reactance. Reactance is the opposition to the movement of electric charge that arises from the changing magnetic and electrical fields in the circuits, carrying alternating currents. So we've talked about the electromagnetic fields that are created within the cable. That has an effect on the flow of the electrons through the cable. And these two things together, resistance and reactance, give the cable its impedance rating. So how does impedance affect the cable? Well, experimentation found that a cable with an impedance rating of 30 ohm was best for power handling, whilst a cable with an impedance rating of 77 ohm was best for reducing attenuation or signal loss. So in devices that require high power handling capability, like broadcast radio, TV transmitters or ham radios, a 50 ohm impedance cable was settled as the best solution to give it the highest power handling whilst also retaining a decent signal. But in cases where high power handling is not really required and you want the best signal with the lowest signal loss, such as in this case with this old Pong console connecting up with my TV, this doesn't warrant high power handling. But I do want the best signal with a cable that loses as little signal strength as possible. And so for this application, a 75 ohm cable will give me the lowest signal attenuation or signal loss. So how do you test if a coax cable is any good? So this Pong console here is not giving out a great image. So I want to test this coax cable to see if that's the problem. There are two tests that I can do simply with my multimeter. I switch the multimeter to continuity mode. All this does is it makes a beeping sound if there is a connection between two sources. So first I test if the central core cable is going from one end to the other without any breaks. I do this by attaching one probe to the pin on the connector and the other probe to the exposed central core wire. Or if on the other end I had another connector, I would put that probe on the pin. That beeping sound tells me that there is a continuous connection and no break along the length of that core cable. Then I want to check that the mesh cable on the outside is also making a continuous connection. So I place one probe on the outer ring of the connector and the other probe on the braided shield on the other end. Or if there was a connector on the other end, I'd place the probe on the outer ring of that other connector. Again, that beep sound tells me that there's a continuous connection of that braided cable on the outside from one end to the other. Now the next thing I can do to check the cable is putting one probe on the pin of the connector and one probe on the outer ring. So the outer ring is connected to that mesh braided jacket on the outside, while the inside pin is connected to that central core wire. As we've discussed, both of those should not be touching each other. They should be insulated from each other. That means when I touch the pin and the outside ring with my probes in continuity mode, I shouldn't hear a beep. If I do hear a beep, that suggests continuity, which means there is a short somewhere in that cable between the central core wire and the outer mesh jacket. Now I hear no beep, so that is also fine. Now one word of warning, I do that last test while disconnecting the cable from the console itself. If I try to detect a short 
while the cable is connected to the console because at the board level those two cables are making contact it will beep showing that there is a short in the cable when there is actually not it's just that they're making contact at the board level i have to desolder the cable from the board in order to do that continuity test to detect if there is a short between the two conductors within the cable and there we have it that's what a coax cable is that's how it works and there are some very simple tests you can do to ensure that the cable is okay for more videos like this and videos where I repair things like this old Pong console I use for my demonstration here, check out my channel. If you like the videos, I appreciate the thumbs up and it would be great if you could consider subscribing. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll catch you next time.